Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Bitcoin halving for 2020, which is actually happening in about two days at the time of this recording. So the Bitcoin halving actually happens once every four years, so it's a pretty important event to talk about. And although this isn't necessarily a crypto channel, uh, it's definitely in the realm of finance and I think it's an important topic to discuss. So I believe it's good to have a speculative portion of your portfolio in speculative assets, Bitcoin being one of them. So depending on how young you are, you can allocate a little bit more to taking high risk, high reward positions. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the Bitcoin blockchain very briefly, Bitcoin mining very briefly, Bitcoin supply, uh, what is the halving, why does it occur, and then we're, the million dollar question is actually gonna be any price predictions that we have after this halving of 2020. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So what is the Bitcoin blockchain? So let's, let's separate the word Bitcoin for now and just look at the word blockchain. Blockchain technology is not just specific to Bitcoin. Uh, blockchain is essentially a decentralized distributed ledger that records the origin of digital assets. So what this does is, is it basically records in Bitcoin's case, the sender and the receiver and how much money was actually transacted. So a ledger is basically just a book of digital transactions, if you will. So blockchain technology will actually be used and it'll probably be as ubiquitous as email is today. So if you remember those old news channels or those new uh, news videos saying, someone sent mail digitally through email. Will this ever catch on? Live at six. You know, and now it's, everyone uses email. I guarantee you everyone watching this video has sent or received an email. That's most likely what blockchain will become five to 10 years from now. So in Bitcoin's case, as I mentioned, you have someone who is a sender, a receiver, and the amount listed, which then fills up these blocks with information of these transactions. So these blocks are basically transactions grouped together and they can only store a maximum amount of info, which then has to be verified, a chain is created, and then you have a next block that comes after it, which fills up with more info. So there's a network of computers all around the world that verifies these transactions and they do that through mining. So if you're still with me, let's go to Bitcoin mining. Okay, so very quickly, let's talk about Bitcoin mining. If you're already familiar with how this works, skip to the next section. If not, very quickly, Bitcoin mining is basically how those blocks and those transactions get verified. So we're, we don't have people literally mining like you would mine gold or silver. You're basically using um, computing power to verify those transactions, okay? So miners are people or groups of people at this point just because it's gotten so hard to mine on your own uh, that use basically computing power to maintain that ledger and verify those blocks, keeping the information clean. So think of these miners as basically auditors or accountants that keep the blockchain clean and verified so you can verify the sender, the receiver, and the amount sent or received. So basically, miners receive Bitcoin plus fees as an incentive to keep mining, aka to keep verifying all these transactions, aka to keep the network clean. So they receive a little bit of fees from the transaction, and right now they're typically receiving 12.5 Bitcoin for every block that's verified. So now that we've talked about the Bitcoin blockchain and the Bitcoin mining process very briefly to establish just some sort of foundation if you're not familiar, let's talk about the Bitcoin supply. So very quickly, Bitcoin was created by Satoshi Nakamoto in 2009, and Satoshi is not a real person. That is just a pseudonym that a computer programmer went by. It could be an individual male, female, could be a group of people, could be a government agency. No one really knows who created Bitcoin. However, it did start in 2009 after the financial crisis. So this person, whoever this programmer was, they designed Bitcoin to mirror the characteristics of gold. Yes, gold, the precious metal is what I'm talking about. So uh, just like Bitcoin, mining gold takes effort. You have to set up the mine, you have to set up the people, you have to set up the equipment. You don't just you know, click a button and print trillions of dollars overnight like we have been over the past few months. Um, and just like gold, Bitcoin takes computer power and it takes time and effort to mine these Bitcoin. So this makes Bitcoin and gold a very hard money as opposed to being a soft money. And I'm not gonna go into much detail in that video about the characteristics of money. You can see those videos here. 
So there's only ever gonna be a maximum supply of 21 million Bitcoin ever to be minted or brought into circulation. And we have about 18 million of those in circulation right now. So the reason for this is because the Satoshi wanted to create a money that is deflationary because there is a fixed amount. So this means that over time, Bitcoin's purchasing power will actually increase instead of decrease. So fiat, the US dollar, is actually an inflationary currency. So here's an example. In 1940, a gallon of milk cost roughly 52 cents a gallon. In 2020, it cost $2.75. That's what we call inflation. So a lot of people, they don't understand that if they're saving money in a savings account that actually is an interest rate lower than the rate of inflation, they're actually losing money, making savers losers. There, I said it again, oh my God. Um, so let's get into the next section of what actually is the halving and some price predictions. So what is the halving that's happening in the next couple of days here? The halving is essentially just the reduction in block rewards by 50%. So if you remember earlier in the video, I explained how the miners are rewarded 12.5 Bitcoin plus fees every time they verify a block and verify all that data and create a new hash. Essentially, that is gonna be dropped by 50%. So right now they're earning 12.5, that's gonna be dropped to 6.25. So essentially, Every halving, well, the joke is it's called a halving. So the every halving happens every 210,000 blocks. One block takes about 10 minutes to verify. And if you do all the math, that actually comes out to be 3.99 years. So you can see here in 2009, you rewarded 50 Bitcoin per block, then 25, and then 12.5. And now in 2020, it's going to be 6.25 moving forward. So in 2024, leave a comment down below what the half of 6.25 is, if you're still watching at this point. So why does the halving occur? Why did Satoshi Nakamoto even bother to program this feature into Bitcoin? Well, basically it prevents inflation, which will ultimately decrease purchasing power. So going back to that milk in 1940, how it was 52 cents a gallon, and in 2020, it's roughly 275, that's what Bitcoin is trying to prevent. It's a deflationary asset or deflationary money. So you can't just print Bitcoin overnight and especially trillions of it like you can with the US dollar. It needs to be uh, halved every 210,000 blocks to prevent that from happening. Uh, he or she, Satoshi Nakamoto or them, uh, actually understood that technology improves over time, meaning that miners would be able to verify more blocks faster, which would ultimately increase the supply of Bitcoin much more quickly than it can now. So here's an example. Right now, there's about 1,800 Bitcoin that are mined daily, which results in an inflation rate of about 3.8%. After this halving occurring, that's gonna go down to about 900 Bitcoin daily, which actually brings it down to 1.9%, which is actually lower than the US economy. So this controls circulation of money over time, unlike the amount of money that we're essentially just printing in this time period right now. So on to the next and final slide and probably what you all came for because you're all greedy and you know impatient. Uh, <laughs> price predictions, let's get into price predictions right now. Okay, so finally, the slide you've all been waiting for, let's get some price predictions out here. So Bitcoin, after looking at all the research and all the macro charts and all the historical charts that have happened after each halving or halving, whatever you wanna call it, uh, Bitcoin typically hits a new all-time high within one and a half years after each halving. So check out this chart right here. So you can see in this chart here that the first halving block reward went from 50 to 25. That's the first orange line in the chart. That was November of 2012. And Bitcoin basically skyrocketed, then went sideways and skyrocketed again. And then for the next two and a half to three years to the next halving, where the block reward went from 25 to 12 and a half, it is actually pretty much sideways or down. Then it skyrockets again after about a year and a half and then it went sideways to down up until 2020, which is where we're at right now. And this is where I kind of predict where it's gonna do the same thing. It'll probably go down, go sideways, get manipulated by institutional investors. And then once the next halving comes where the block reward goes from 6.25 in half, which you answered in the comment section down below, it'll probably skyrocket after that again. So some people are actually saying that <laughs> the peak is going to be in August of 2021 where the price of one Bitcoin is $533,431. Some people are saying $100,000, some people are saying zero. What do I think? 
So me, I'm not a Bitcoin expert, I'm just someone who holds it as a speculative part of their portfolio and a small percentage of my overall net worth. And I think it's going to do what the chart just said. It's probably gonna fall, it's probably gonna decline, it's probably gonna get manipulated, it's probably gonna get made fun of, someone's gonna leave some stupid comment in the comment section down below, and then I'll be laughing at them about uh, 48 months later. So if you wanna buy Bitcoin, check out the referral link below. Yes, that's an affiliate link. I get $10 when you sign up, you get $10 when you sign up. It's a win-win, or you can meet me in person, buy me a beer. It's a PG channel now, some sixth grade teacher told me there's sixth graders watch this channel, so don't buy me a beer, buy me a Shirley Temple or a Virgin Daiquiri. As always, I hope you got value out of this video. Please share it with one uh, crypto friend or crypto fanatic, and I look, to see, look forward to seeing you in the next video. This was a very long, awkward outro, and if you're still watching, you're the real MVP. <laughs> Thank you so much, and have a prosperous day.